Hello, everyone, and welcome to our um, webinar today for America Saves Week. My name is Jennifer Rodriguez, and I will be your presenter today. And we are covering saving for major milestones. And I think that's a very important topic um, to cover because sometimes we think, well, what am I going to be saving for? Why is it so important to save? And there's so many important, um, you know, uh, reasons why we should. And I think, you know, understanding that there's milestones that are coming up in our life um, or, you know, maybe our family members, something that's very special, uh, you know, planning for those ahead of time is very important. So we're going to talk about that today. Now, before we do that, I do want to tell you a little bit about our agencycredit.org. Um, our credit, uh, our agencycredit.org um, is a nonprofit credit counseling agency, and we are also a HUD-approved housing counseling agency. We were formed back in 1974, so we're turning 50 this year. And our mission is simple, um, yet vital to improve the financial well-being of individuals and families by providing quality financial education and counseling. So we do um, have several services. Um, some are definitely related to um, debt services and some are also housing. And so for the debt services, we do have credit, uh, credit counseling, uh, credit report review, debt counseling, and debt management programs. And that's mostly for individuals that are either, um, you know, looking to, um, you know, get out of debt, reduce their debt, um, and need uh, maybe a, a way to manage their debt. Um, also for individuals that are going through bankruptcy, we do the um, pre and the post discharge, um, the pre bankruptcy and the post um, discharge courses that are mandated by the Department of Justice. Um, and then we also have student loan counseling and along with, um, you know, the credit counseling um, piece uh, itself, we also have education. Uh, so if you go onto our website, credit.org, you're going to find um, a lot of educational information, uh, uh, webinars, and also uh, free educational material that you have um, access to. And then for the housing services, we have home buyer assistance, foreclosure, uh, foreclosure assistance, pre-purchase uh, counseling, and that's for individuals that are looking to purchase and want to, you know, know if they're ready to buy. And then um, for reverse mortgage um, counseling, rental, rental counseling, and then we also have the home buyer education course, and that's a full eight hour course. Once you complete that course, you get a certificate and you could use that certificate um, towards, you know, uh, programs to purchase your first home. So um, what do homes, education, and retirement all have in common, right? Um, and there could be other things, you know, that you have to kind of think about, like, what, what do all of these things have in common? Well, these things are all major milestones, right? And, um, you know, sometimes we're looking at large amounts of money, and yes, you do have to plan for that. So that's why it's important to kind of start thinking um, you know, at a very early stage, you know, what do I want to do with my life? You know, what are my financial goals? And, um, and and focus on, you know, how long is this going to take and how much do I have to save for that? So planning is going to be a big, big part of actually hitting those milestones, right? So being able to save the money, planning the time, and knowing exactly how you're going to go about um, reaching that goal is going to be very important. Even if you don't feel like, you know, okay, well, I really don't want to purchase a home right now, or, you know, I don't, I don't really think I should plan for retirement. You know, that could very well be the case, but your your mindset could definitely change in the future. Right. So, again, just kind of preparing anyway, um, you know, to see, you know, um, you know, where where your life is going to take you. Your your milestones can definitely change. And then, you know, you could definitely um, be flexible and adjustable with that. But again, if you if it's something you've thought about already or you haven't just yet, um, just make sure that you, um, you take everything into consideration uh, because these milestones will definitely come around and you want to be prepared for those as well. So having plans, um, understanding how to save for these milestones um, and understanding how, you know, your goals and your finances align is very um, important. And I think that's going to be the biggest tool that you will have um, when it comes to achieving success with your um, financial uh, goals. So why are these milestones so important? If you're celebrating school, work, and personal milestones, this helps you acknowledge your own successes, right? So I think it's very um, nice to be able to say, I planned this, I, you know, I worked hard for it, and I accomplished it. I think it feels, you know, really good. And so it, it helps you feel better about yourself. And then also when it comes to um, 
um, opportunities to strengthen your bonds, maybe with family members, with coworkers, with friends. I think it's something that's very good because, you know, you feel that you are in control of your money and you're in control of your financial goals. So positive memories of past accomplish, uh, passive comp accomplishments can help motivate people pursue future goals. Why? Because you gave yourself that challenge you um, you met the challenge, you succeeded, and you can take it on, you know, on any other topics, any other things. You, you can definitely challenge yourself and, you know, hit those milestones and hit those goals. So the first thing you want to do to be able to plan, because again, it, uh, planning has a lot to do with hitting those milestones, right? You're going to want to start with your budget. So what is your budget, right? It's a very strategic uh, spending plan where you're basically going to tell your money where you want it to go or what you want it to do, okay? Um, and hopefully, you know, you get so good at having your own budget that you'll be able to tell your money where you want it to go before you even get it. And I think that's gonna be the goal of everything, right? Um, so, you know, don't, don't feel too stressed out about not, you know, getting your budget right the first time around. It's gonna take some time. You're gonna have to kind of calibrate and figure out, um, you know, have there been any changes in my life? Have there been any changes in my income or my expenses? And then just kind of, you know, again, balance out your 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 budget again, but don't lose sight of your financial goals, right? So again, how do you start with your budget? You have to know a couple of things. Uh, one of course is how much do you earn, right? So how much income do you have coming into your household? And then also how much do you spend? So how much is actually, um, you know, being spent or money that's coming out of your household, right? Um, those two things are going to be um, crucial to being able to build um, a budget, a financial plan that's going to actually make sense and is going to be very realistic, right? One of the things we definitely recommend is tracking your expenses. And the reason why it's important to track is because, you know, sometimes we can have a mental budget or mental financial plan where we could say, okay, I have this coming in, you know, this is when I get paid and this, these are the bills that I've got going out. But when you actually start writing things down, that's where you could actually, you don't have to just visualize, you could actually see what the numbers are doing, right? So that's going to be um, uh, a, a, a key element to being able to, to get your budget and your financial plan, you know, straight, um, um, from the get-go. Uh, now when you go ahead and you track your spending, we recommend that you do it for at least 90 days. Why so long, right? Why three months? Um, I, we think that that's a really good, uh, amount of time for you to figure out, you know, kind of what all of your expenses look like. And the reason why I'm saying that is because, not every single month do you have the same expenses, right? So one month you could be generally, you know, you have your, your regular expenses and you've got a couple of, you know, odd ones here and there, month two, the same thing, month three, the same thing. But in, in a window of three months, you are able to, to have a really good idea of the types of expenses you have. Because again, again, you do have some expenses that are, you know, periodic, you don't, you don't have those every single month. So you have to take into consideration all of those expenses even your annual expenses. So that would be, for example, like any, uh, your memberships, um, your, you know, the tags for your vehicle. So the registration, you know, these are all expenses, money that comes out of your pocket that you have to take into consideration. And you also have like your birthdays and other celebrations that you spend money on. So again, just tracking absolutely everything will help you better understand you know, where your money is going. Another really great way to do it is by categorizing, right? So these are my housing expenses. These are my food expenses. These are my transportation expenses. And then that way you'll be able to see, you know, what category maybe you're going a little bit above on, or if you could maybe, um, you know, have options to reduce some of the expenses in certain categories. So again, again, that will make it very um, clear for you to kind of understand where your money is, is going. So um, again, 90 days is basically what we um, what we recommend, and you want to record absolutely everything, even if you tip the waiter, you know, you, you, re you record absolutely everything. So with your budget, again, you want to make sure you know your income and you know your expenses. And like I was mentioning earlier, categorizing is very important. And in this sheet that we have on the screen right now, you get to see, you know, different um, categories here. Now, um, with this type of, of, of 
budget form, let's say, right? Um, there are may, many different ways that you could budget or that you could plan your finances. This is just one of them. Use whatever feels more comfortable to you. So it could be, you know, writing things down. It could be an Excel sheet. It could be printing out the free um, uh, forms that we have on our website. Um, if those help you out, then you can use those as well. But just make sure that you track everything. And so again, with this form here, um, it's really nice because you get to see all of your expenses categorized. And then on the columns, you have column uh, week one, week two, week three, and week four. So that allows you to see when the expenses take place within a month. And then also at the top, it says income. The top row says income. So that'll let you know, okay, I get a paycheck, let's say the first of the month. And then on the 15th of the month, so that would be like week two or three. Um, and so you could plan your expenses and what expenses need to be covered by the by the the income that you have coming in during that time. So again, this is a really great way to keep track of 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 everything, and also allow um, you to to manage um, and tell your money where to go to what expenses. You don't want to be you know paying late fees and things of that sort just because the payments are due on let's say the 10th and your your paycheck doesn't come in until the 15th, right? So again, this one really helps you manage both your income and um and your expenses also let me go back to this sorry on your um on your budget one of the things you want to definitely include is how much you're saving towards your goals right so you want to go ahead and identify the type of financial goal you have um you know whether it's a short-term mid-term or long-term goal and then you also want to include that um you know the monthly savings or you know Every time you get paid, let's say it's bi-weekly, the bi-weekly savings you want to um, put towards that goal, you also want to include it in this budget. So setting setting goals. So again, we we have different types of goals, right? Um, and, and again, if we're talking about financial goals and we're talking about major milestones, um, you know, sometimes the major milestones are the, the ones that maybe are a little bit more expensive and could be, you know, potential long-term goals. You might have short-term goals, and that would be any type of goal that you uh, can accomplish within 12 months, right? So, for example, you know, going on a vacation that's going to cost you $1,200, then you'll already know, okay, I have to save $100 every single month. And, you know, by next year, I'll be able to go on vacation. So, because, it, you know, you'll have your $1,200. Um, your mid-range goal, that would be anything like two years plus, like two, two to five years. So, let's say if you're looking to purchase a car right? Um, either you want to have like a really nice down payment to purchase your vehicle, or if you want to purchase your vehicle cash, then you'll know how much time you need to be able to save that, right? Now, again, going back to the major um, life, uh, um, uh, life goals, right? Your milestones. Um, we're looking at long-term goals, and that's anything that's five years plus. So if you're saving for a down payment for your your first for your first uh, mortgage, your house, right, your first house. Um, if you're looking to save towards retirement or your college education, you know anything like that. Of course, it's going to be five years plus. But understanding, you know, what the milestones are, how much you're planning to spend on on those on those goals is gonna be very important. And saving for those goals early on is gonna help you, um, you know, definitely quite a bit. And if you wanna add more smaller goals in there, you can if you start pretty um, early on, right? So again, um, when it comes to saving for major milestones, you could be saving again to go to college, right? Uh, or maybe send off, send your kids off to college, buying your first home, getting married, uh, starting a family, you know, that's some, another financial um, thing you have to think about if you're going to start your family. Um, and then starting a business, if you're going to start your own business, you know, you have to start thinking about, you know, um, locations, uh, you know, product and things that you have to have marketing, all of that, you have to spend money for that. And retiring, right? So if you're just thinking of, of retirement, and you just, you know, want to be in a very comfortable position, I think it's very important that you start, you know, thinking about that early on. So planning for your milestones, um, of course, if let's say you say, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and retire at this age and I'm going to start saving for that now. And let's say that you're getting really close to that age and you really love what you do and you think, you know what, I don't think I'm ready for retirement just yet. That's fine. You could make adjustments, right? Um, or if you're thinking I'm going to retire early, then you can go ahead and bump up, you know, whatever it is you have going towards that goal. Um, if you are thinking of having maybe a big wedding and now you're thinking of having something a little bit more private, then, you know, you can just, again, go ahead and make those those adjustments or changes 
um, as you go, as you go. Um, if you have more than one goal, uh, that's perfectly fine. You can do that, okay? So it's just prioritizing maybe, you know, to see what's a little bit more important. So let's say if you have, um, you know, you want to save for your retirement and then you also want to save for education or your home ownership or things of that sort, just think of, of, of how, um, what path you're going to take. So first I want to purchase my first home or first I want to, you know, go to school, then purchase my first home, you know, or get married, then my home, then retirement. So figure out, you know, kind of what, what's going to come first and, um, and then just kind of start planning for that, the dollar amount and, and, and how much, but you could still contribute a little bit to each of your goals. Um, and, you know, you don't have to just stick to one, which is really nice. So again, just decide to, you know, which is the most important goal to you. And, you know, again, this can change over time, right? You could say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and, and, um, and do the wedding and then purchase my house. And then, you know, things just don't happen in that order. That's perfectly fine. You can change things around. Um, sometimes, you know, tough, tough times do come around. And, you know, sometimes you could say, oh my gosh, you know, I've, I've uh, lost my employment. Um, I've had a reduction of income. Uh, you know, whatever the case is, uh, you can go ahead and make adjustments as, you know, as you see fit. Um, if you were, you know, putting money towards retirement and that's one of your milestones, that's the furthest out, uh, you can stop the contributions for that for now and focus on your today, right? Um, once everything gets back to normal, you can go ahead and readjust and go back to your regular um, plan. But, you know, don't get discouraged if there is some type of financial hardship that does come around. Do your research. That's going to be very, very important because you want to make sure that you fully understand what you're saving for. If there's any additional expenses, um, you know, or, um, you know, anything you're going to have to be prepared for. Right. So having the information right in front of you um, can make you a little more confident. Right. With what the path you're taking. So that's 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 going to be, um, you know, crucial to making sure that your financial plan is successful, right? Um, with retirement, uh, you want to understand the different saving vehicles that you might have available to you. Um, you know, you could talk to your employer, see, you know, what programs they have available for you to start saving for your retirement. Um, or you could look for individual accounts. So again, just understand you might have separate or different options that will help you uh, get to the same goal, right? You also want to have a reliable calculation, for the money that you need to save and what best investment options you have. You have to also take into consideration inflation and things of that sort. If you are investing your money, then understand, you know, how much your return would be in that case. Uh, with home purchase, it's important to have an idea of the type of house that you want and in what area, right? And, um, and then you can, you know, look at the prices there. Depending on how soon you think of purchasing your home, um, you could start, you know, looking around now and start getting a really good idea of, how much you're going to be spending for the type of home that you want in the area that you want it. Um, you may also want to know your credit score, right? So it's not just preparing your budget and knowing what your goals are, especially for like a large purchase, like for example, your home, knowing your credit and knowing what steps you need to take to either improve your credit or maybe pay off some debt, you know, whatever it is you want to work on that now. So also, you know, looking at um, what your credit looks like is going to be very important because that is going to be, um, you know, one of the 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 um, the the tools that you're going to need to use to be able to qualify for a mortgage and hopefully get, you know, a pretty good rate. So if you work on your credit, that's definitely going to be a big um, saver when it comes to to interest. So you have to take take that in into consideration too. Um, if you're looking for um, saving towards an education, right? Um, there could be a couple of different, again, avenues that you could use. There's a 529 college saving plan. Um, there's um, where you could actually put your money in there and it starts growing. And when you withdraw the money for education, um, you're not taxed on that money. So with any of these goals, you don't utilize automatic savings. And we did talk about automatic savings in our in our webinar Monday where um, if it's you know possible for your employer to be able to help you um, dedicate a particular dollar amount and set that off to you know a savings account, um, you know that's a really great do it way to do it automatically. Um, you can also um, you know do that yourself by having certain you know amounts of money coming from your checking account and then you know sending that off to another savings account, transferring those funds automatically month after month. You could just set it up 
um, for yourself. Um, you can also direct an investment company or your financial institution to set money aside for yourself if it comes to like your retirement options, right? So you could put that down for retirement or if you're looking to purchase a home, you could put that aside for your, um, your down payment um, or again, your educational accounts, you can do that as well. So just knowing what tools you have available to make this a lot easier for yourself um, I think it's a, it's a really great way to do it. When you do it automatically, it, it almost just happens. And it's just su such a natural, such an organic way to start saving where you don't have to think about it too, too much. And you don't have to worry about it too much because it's just a part of, of your budget. It's, it's a part of your month to month. And you've already established your goals and everything's just happening automatically. So, I mean, that's a really great way um, to set everything up. The sooner you start saving, the less you're going to have to save each month. All right. So again, if you start planning now for something that can happen, you know, five, 10, 20 years from now, uh, I, I think it's a really, it's a really great time to start, right? Delaying your savings, whether it be for, you know, um, education, that could be, you know, something where you're not going to have enough money saved and you might have to take out loans and you might not, you know, want to, to do that. So if you can get um, started on that a little earlier, um, that's the less loans you'll have to take for your education. Delaying savings for home ownership or retirement may mean that you would have to uh, wait a little bit longer to buy a house or work longer before you retire. So you have to think about those things, too, uh, you know, and and see, you know, if you're willing to work beyond your retirement age. If you are willing to buy a house later on, we don't know what the market's going to look like. So, you know, you kind of have to think about those things um, right now. So these are your choices to make. If you are, you know, looking to do your research, get some information, um, do the planning, right? Do the planning to support your your um, your your goals, your financial goals. It's going to be, you know, uh, something that is going to help you not only, you know, with your financial goals, but if you look at your at, at your financial future, you're working on your month to month. You've got all of your milestones planned out. You're automatically saving towards those. You're well educated. You're confident that your plan is good. You know if it's you know something happens financially, you could reassess. Um, you could pause and you can continue. Once you know that and you're very confident with it, I think you're pretty much ready um, and set to be you know um, you know confident enough that you're doing the right thing. Now, it's always important to get you know support whether it's, you know, more education with finances or more tips on how to save. And this is why I want to talk about um, America Saves. And this is why we're doing all of these workshops this week, because we do want to make sure that people really do understand the importance of saving, right? It could be saving for a goal at the end of the month. It could be, you know, saving for a goal, you know, 20 years from now. But the thing is starting, right? It could be for something small, it could be for an emergency, or it could be for something big. So making sure that you can make a promise to yourself, okay, is going to be um, something that is going to help you say, I am accountable for my goals, I will, you know, do my best to reach these goals, and I will educate myself and get all the tools that I can um, to help me reach these goals. And that's why America Saves Week is so important, because we promote saving, right, for anything, at any age, for any reason. And so we uh, we do encourage you to, uh, to take the pledge, right? And so when you make a pledge to yourself, you're making, again, that promise to yourself that you're going to meet your goal because you want to put yourself in that position where you're going to be comfortable with your finances, where you're going to be able to reach your goals, where you're going to be able to buy your house, right? So we always say start small, think big. And we recommend that you um, visit our website at inlandempiresaves.org. Credit.org manages the campaign for the Inland Empire and also San Diego. And if you want to take that pledge, um, you know, go to our website and register there. Take the pledge. Um, along with the pledge, the promise that you make for yourself, you will also be receiving uh, resources, educational resources that help you with whatever your financial goals are. So I think it's a really great way to get good information. Um, uh, when it comes to, you know, um, reaching your goals. And, and I think it's a good way to kind of, um, you know, put that accountability on ourselves. I think it's a really great way to do it. So you could be a part of the Saver community and, you know, go ahead and take the pledge through America Saves Inland Empire, um, dot, Inland Empire Saves dot org. So we have a, a few more dates coming through. We've got um, our class tomorrow, our workshop tomorrow is paying down debt is saving. 
And then our last um, webinar is um, Saving at Any Age, and that will be Friday. And we do have a very um, special guest speaker joining us um, Friday from the uh, U.S. Department of Labor. So please, please, please make sure you join us for that workshop. Um, other than that, that's all for us today. Thank you so much for joining us and hope to see you in our next one. Thank you.